Hi, I'm Chris, and in the previous demos, I showed you how we can use NI Veristan to configure our real-time hardware, and then how we can use the NI Veristan workspace to create a user interface to interact with the application once it's deployed. I also showed you many of the tools that are included as part of that workspace, like the alarm monitor and the, the uh, channel fault manager. What I want to show you in this demo is how we can use the most popular tool, the Stimulus Profile Editor, to create stimulus profiles that include logging tasks. All right, so before I do, I'm going to make a few changes to my Inoverist application. First thing I'm going to do is um, add a graph here that, and link this to that value of the user channel offset. Now, if you remember, the offset is used by the calculated channel to specify the offset between the output of my sine wave model and the output of the calculated channel. And so I'm going to add a numeric control here that will allow me to manually change that value. All right, so tidy up my screen here just a little bit, and we'll be ready to go. Let me change it back into run mode, and you'll see now as I vary the offset, we're now seeing that calculated channel, the red waveform here in this graph, change its distance from the, from the yellow waveform, the output of the sine wave. All right, but I don't always want to do that manually. Oftentimes, when I'm testing a device or performing a real-time test, I want to automate those stimulus that stimulus generation, and then I want to have some logging tasks associated with it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with the Stimulus Profile Editor. So what I'll do here is I'm going to open our Stimulus Profile Editor, and there's two primary components to this, to this tool. I'm going to generate or, or configure my stimulus generators, and then I can configure logging tasks that will be associated with them. So to configure a stimulus generator, I'll start by adding some steps. For example, I'm going to ramp to a value of 5. Uh, after that, I'm going to dwell there for a couple seconds. Um, and then after that, I'm going to insert a conditional step. What this conditional step will do is it's going to look at the user channel test event, and it's going to wait until that event occurs before it proceeds past this step. Once that event does occur, I will play back a sine wave. We'll give it a, a, an offset of 5, a frequency of 20, and we'll do 50 cycles. After that waveform has been played back, I also want to then play some data that I recorded and have saved a file. So I'll import that file. And when I do, we can see the rate is set to play it back at one point per second. Once complete, I'll add a final step to ramp back down to a value of zero. And that will complete the, this stimulus generator. Now that I've defined that stimulus generation, the only other thing I need to do is map it to a particular channel in my real-time application. So I'll click on the Add Mappings and navigate to that user channel offset to make that, that relationship or that connection. Okay, so the other part of a stimulus profile is to create logging tasks. And I can create multiple logging tasks, each file having its own set of channels to log, logging conditions, logging rates. For this demo, I'm just going to configure one log file. We'll call it my data log one. And I'm going to have it log all the time, and I'm going to specify which channels I want it to, to log, which will be the inputs and outputs of my sine wave model, all of my users' channels, and all of my calculated channels. So we can see now here I've specified my stimulus generator for the offset channel and the channels that I want to log. I'm going to shrink this window down to get it out of the way and click Run. It will ask me to save, and then after I, do, after I save this, it's going to download this stimulus profile to my real-time hardware to execute deterministically. All right, so now what we're going to see here now is it's going to begin that ramp to a value of 5, and then it's going to hold at that, value, that state for 2 seconds before evaluating my conditional statement. Now my conditional statement has not occurred yet, so I'm going to change back to uh, edit mode and add a Boolean control that will allow me to manually create that or cause that test event to occur. So I'm going to link this Boolean control to the user channel test event. I'll click OK. And returning to run mode, you'll see now when I cause this event, my test profile is going to continue executing by doing the sine wave and then playing back that data that I had uh, grabbed from a file. All right, we can see that my stimulus profile is done executing because the run button is, hot, is, uh, is enabled again. 
So I'm going to close out of my stimulus profile. And the last thing I may want to do is look at that data that I have uh, just logged. So to do that, I'm going to open the data viewer. And then from that, I can see here I have my log file. I can click on that to view all channels, and I can, I can see this data. If I'd like to, I may want to zoom in to a particular state here. Or I may even want to, to change the channels uh, and only view some of the channels. For example, maybe I just want to view these, uh, these uh, user channels that I, that I was using in this particular log. All right, so that concludes all of our demos here. I showed you how we can use Veristan to configure the hardware and deploy it to a real-time target for execution. Showed you how we can then take the Veristan workspace to create a user interface and use a variety of tools, including this stimulus profile editor, to complete our real-time application.